These days they fill with color, they're sewn together, and now they're holding us. This place like a painted vision, and now our intuition gives us hope of what's to come. There's a rush as we leave the shadows, as we shake these shadows and find the morning sun. These lungs holding expectations and silent declarations and I the horizon feel the hope inside us this is where we're meant to be our eyes catch the horizon Saturday morning, Sonder family. That is a new song to me. I, I discovered it when I was looking for some freedom song songs. Um, it's by Tim Halpern. And I just love, I thought it was a good Saturday morning vibe. I hope you're sitting with your favorite way to wake up on a Saturday morning, tea, coffee, lemon water. I tell Katie, I always start my day with a glass of lemon water and I set it down somewhere and walked around the house for 20 minutes and never found it. So I had to make another glass. I'm There's, there's a cup of lemon water sitting somewhere, but this is my cup of joe. That's my going to get us through. So we are here together to set up for a new week. I love Saturday mornings. Y'all know it just makes me get on top of things. Um, you know, sometimes my, my, my setups happen now and sometimes I'm, you know, working on them on Tuesday morning. So I'm glad to be with you selfishly <laughs> because I'm going to get all the things done this morning because I'm with you guys. And um, we're going to do this together. So make sure your chat is set to everyone. If it says to host and panelists, not everybody's going to be able to see it. I actually <laughs> typed in a couple of messages that went to host and panelists because I had not <laughs> changed it to everyone. So 
Um, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, and that way we can all share with each other. There's always a lot of sharing in the chat because the cameras are off for you. The mics are off for you. If, if this voice is too much, the music's too much, lower that volume, go to mute, take what you need at this moment. Katie and I are just so proud of you for being here and, and getting ready to kick off um, the weekend and, and set yourself up for a good week. And speaking of Katie, she is my co-facilitator this morning. She'll be hanging out in the chat. She will answer any questions that might pop up along the way, point you in the right direction or plug you in and get you along the way. I know lots of things are happening this week. Um, I think Marcia said she's taking her son. She's a little sad because her son's going back for year two in co of, of his college journey. And those are such bittersweet days um, to say goodbye to kiddos. And then there's some of you that are jumping for joy because school is starting this week. And um, you're getting your house back <laughs> to yourself. I have a feeling there's a lot of cleaning and decluttering in our future. Um, so whatever is going on in your life, we are here to support one another. You can be a little sad, be a little happy. Um, I always say when I take my kids to college, it's like the worst breakup I've ever had <laughs> in my life. They, you know, we, we raise them to go away. They're supposed to do it, but it, it's not fun. Um, Anyway, there are those community guidelines because when we gather together, we create safe spaces. <clears throat> and these are the reminders to make sure that those safe spaces happen. And it happens with one another, but it also happens within and where we are. So if there's ever a time that you are not comfortable with a prompt or working on something, just give yourself permission to have um, a little space until your head's in a in a, a place of being able to, you know, process and and you can be kind to yourself. So we always like to remind you of that. And yes, Katie is dropping in the chat that this social is being recorded. You'll be able to access it probably mid-morning on Monday. Um, there will be a couple of other socials happening, um, you know, Monday morning. I'm not sure tomorrow might be morning or night. I, I'm not sure <laughs> what tomorrow's social is, but we do. <clears throat> always um, record these so that you can access them later. And, you know, sometimes on, on rough days, I'll go to the menu on the YouTube channel and I'll find one of our themes and one of our journal prompts and sit and, and redo those because I'm a different person every day. And so that could be something that you do. Of course, you know, this month's theme is freedom. So we are looking at our life um, through that lens of freedom and what it means for us personally, but also how we present in the world with our mindset of freedom. This quote is from our journal and it's from Nelson Mandela. And he said, to be free is not merely to cast off your chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Because, you know, complete freedom and doing whatever you want isn't okay. It doesn't make us part of a community. So there are some guidelines um, for us as we travel this world with one another that, that freedom does have a lot to do with respect and enhancing others. So we're going to kick off this morning with our freedom mind map. Now, is there anybody joining us for the very first time at a social? If you are drop, just put a me in the chat. Let us welcome you. And um, I will explain what that mind map is. It's a bonus prompt. Um, hi, Michelle. She's she's here for the first time. Um, we're, we're glad. Yes, yes. A couple of Michelles. Okay, this is awesome. Um, so we have a bonus prompt at these weekly setups. It's not in your journal. So it's a little bonus for coming um, to these weekly setups that you're going to be able to dig in a little bit deeper. And the mind map actually builds each week, kind of you know, connection um, with different parts of our life. So we'll be starting off by working on our mind map and you'll easily be able to look at week one, which was last week and um, week two. Since you are new here, I'm going to give you a hint, sit with, you know, go grab your phone and, and take literal pictures of screens. I'm going to share a lot of examples. Um, I still change things up in my journal to keep it fresh, to take what I need for particular seasons in my life. And it's so nice to just grab a screenshot or take a photo of something that you can refer to later. 
Um, and yes, Monica is giving a great hint. She's got a designated silk and sonder folder in her phone for that inspiration at her fingertips at any time. Um, after we do that freedom mind map, we're going to do our rosebud thorn reflection, which is a staple of our weekly setups. And it's just, it's a reflection over this past week. I know we still have a day and a half ish left, um, but we can go ahead and start doing that reflection. And then we'll do our weekly setups where I have a lot of examples of how to repurpose sections or use sections just as they are. And they're all from our community. So um, let's dig in. So freedom, we started last week with week one. And that was what does personal freedom look like in your life? I'll share that question. And, and um, we're going to think about those feelings that get evoked when we embrace this idea of feeling. And now I'm going to warn you, this week could feel a little touchy. So if you're not in a good place with it, just you know, grab a screenshot and then let it ruminate and then go back and look at it. Um, and these mind maps don't have to be finished up at the socials. It's kind of like we, we kind of start it and you may find that it hits really big in your life and you really want to dig in further. So this could be something that you sort of think about um, over the next few days. Um, and yes, the, 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 uh, the coloring social was was last night. I'm looking at our um at our our chat. Yeah, we had it, and it should be posted up probably probably Monday. You'll be able to access that. So let's take a look at week two. So week one was personal freedom. We reflected on times in our life where we felt really free, and considered those circumstances and and you know like who, what, where, when, why, all those things. And then asked ourselves, how can we cultivate more of those experiences so that we can have that freedom feeling now, today in our lives? And this week is financial freedom. Um, and so I've got a couple of things for you to consider as you dig in. And I think this is a really big, I mean, I think we could do a whole month alone on really digging into financial freedom and those those ideas that we have. So the question, the prompt this week, and again, if you weren't here last week and you want to work on this, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and grab a screenshot so you've got that week one. But this week is imagine what your life would look like if you achieved financial, complete financial independence. What changes would you make in your lifestyle, career, and relationships? What steps can you do now to move closer to this vision? So as I was putting this stuff together, I considered, you know, my financial journey and, and I'm very fortunate. My, my husband and I got on board together like nine years in seven, well, maybe actually six or seven years into our marriage. And we were tired of the credit card debt and we had bought a house and it just felt like we had debt, 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 debt. And we sat together and, and we're going to be married 41 years Tuesday. So we're very fortunate that we made some decisions as a family and how we wanted to conduct what we do and have been mostly debt free minus a mortgage um, for the majority of our marriage. And that freedom has given us, you know, some opportunities of, of peace. You know, we might not have taken the great trip to Greece, but we have had a lot of peace because finances haven't been um, like gnawing at us. But there are still some things that we have to think about um, when we make our decisions. We have to avoid that lifestyle creep that we, you know, see in the socials and you need this and this is going to make your life better. Um, all those things that that we're told we need, do we really need it? Um, we still try to live below our means. We are early retirees. Um, we don't do credit card debt. We we use that almost like a cash card and track that, and we stick to a budget pretty tightly. Um, we money manage. We have decisions as a couple that that are mostly in line. And we do a lot of delayed gratification. So we have a pause. Like if I want something, put it in my cart, maybe not come back to it for a couple of days and see see how it still feels, how it's still still hitting. So that that's kind of where I'm in. Now let me let me give you some ideas to think about. I found a couple of graphics that I was very excited to share about. And and Katie and I were talking about this 
idea, this financial freedom idea. And she said, you know, some of it is that I like to center myself with, I have the freedom to learn more, right? To go out and seek what I might need to incorporate more financial freedom in my life. I can educate myself. There's so many things that are out there at your fingertips and I am free to do so. Um, this financial self-care, which I love thinking of our freedom through that lens of self-care, maybe there's one thing on here that is going to speak to you and you can gravitate to that thing for thinking about the steps you can take to move closer to a vision. Um, so, you know, are do you have a budget? Maybe that's the area you want to start with. Um, do you save a little bit of your salary every month? Maybe that's the one thing. Um, this was huge for me. Y'all remember we did the theme of indulgence, which I grew up very financially insecure and I have a very hard time treating myself and I love this one. It's okay to spend and treat yourself. Finding a balance is key. That was freeing for me to give myself that kind of permission with um, finances and, and indulging a little bit. Um, are you tracking like what's coming in and what's going out? Like more than a budget, but really tracking and knowing what that picture looks like. Maybe that's what you need. Set, so, set those goals, set those habits and celebrate when you achieve them. And then remember that any self-care is a process. We know that. Um, so always be kind to yourself and learn from your mistakes. So maybe that's the one thing. And I have one more graphic I really want to lean into. And Katie's going to drop a link to this um, article that where I found this pyramid. And it's from a, a, a little group that's online. They have a newsletter. It might be a really good place for a starting point because it's very practical stuff. It's called the Hell Yeah Group. And um, this little graphic is from an article, Three Steps to Stop Freaking Out About Your Finances. And it's done in this pyramid. So it helps you kind of sort out priorities. So if you look at the bottom part, that's like the first stuff, the first things that need to happen as you build up toward the top of that pyramid. And so I, you know, if you're like, I don't, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what to do. That might be a good starting point. So why don't you start thinking about financial freedom the freedom to spend, the freedom to save, the freedom to get knowledge, um, you know, kind of meander through your brain on this one. And again, it might be, this might be something that you sort of really lean into for a couple of days, not just for our few minutes here. I'm going to put on a song while you start contemplating this. I'll go back and forth between these graphics so you can take a another look at that and feel free to share in the chat. I can see the chat rolling. So um, share things that might be coming to mind because we are a community and we can support and inspire one another. I'll be back to check in in just a few minutes.
Okay. Lots of authentic sharing, authentic inspiration, real talk is out there. And this is like, are you, are you ever in a place where you feel hundred percent financially secure? And I'm going to tell you, no, um, for me, I'm, I'm a terribly insecure person when it comes to finances. It's, you know, from my birth family, my family of origin, and I had to learn. And I always wonder, am I making the right decisions? And what if, and what if, and what if, and oh, but what if, and, and we've had those things, you know, two steps up the ladder and three steps back down. And, and, you know, my thorns are very often, you know, new water heater tires for the car, very, you know, financially tied up. So it is something that um, I have to really work on so that I can truly experience that feeling of freedom. So I think we all um, are in our own little journey. And I so appreciate the support that I saw in the chat. And again, give yourself that grace to do one thing. Don't feel like, okay, today's the day and I'm going to just revamp everything. That, because when we take off too big of a bite, um, you know, we choke, right? So we we want to take these smaller um, steps for self-care. This is one of those, we always, I call them my grown-up self-care things. It's not, you know, my bubble baths and my um, drinking a glass of wine. It is, it is not the fun. It's not fun. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. But be gentle with yourself as you move forward. And I, I do think that this topic is one that will so well serve us when we can create that financial freedom mindset. And you, if you're struggling with debt, you know, you, you may feel strapped to that, but but work in those ways, learn ways where you can have moments of feeling free as you're working through all of that. So, you know, like, like someone said, they, you know, they schedule in their treat. They make sure that it's in there because that is also a part of being free that you are giving yourself permission. I told you it was a very, very complicated um, mind map this week. So you might want to, you know, work on this. And this could be something that is a catalyst that will, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really start digging into this. So let's take a look at our rosebud thorns now. That's going to be on page 36. And I said, this is a staple of our time together every week. This is just where we do a reflection over the week. Now, if you want to wait until tomorrow, um, the end of the day or Monday to, to do your rosebud thorn, that's fine. That's fine. Or you you might partially be ready. Um, the roses are those things that we're celebrating and they can be little. They can be as small as I brush my teeth every single morning this week. That's a rose. Um, you know, what positive things are you embracing for yourself and celebrating? It could be really big things as well. The buds are those things that are in the works, that could blossom, that could come to fruition. The things you're thinking about, the things you're planning, those can be as simple as, I got a new week ahead. Um, or, you know, I know that my, for right now, I'm thinking, man, those burr months are coming. I'm ready for the burr months. I'm tired of summer, um, a bud for me. And then the thorns didn't go well something you're ruminating over, something that's causing you grief. And it could be a temporary thorn. And I know many of you live with a thorn that is always there. You may be a caregiver. You may be having health issues. And those thorns don't go away, but they are there. There's power in being able to put that on paper. Just saying goodbye to it for a little bit. It was a week. I'm putting it here. I'm going to leave you right there. Move on to, to next week. Um, For me, I kept my two older grandkids, my three-year-old and my six-year-old this week. And so we had Camp Grand Happy. This was week two, but I had the big kids. And so um, their mama went back to work. She's a school teacher. And so we just made a lot of fun memories. They're a little bit older now, so it's we can go and do. And that was definitely my rose. Um, and this time of year is always a little itchy for me, a little uncomfortable because I, I was an educator. And so my August was always such a full month. And so I love that I could embrace these littles and sort of do fun things and plan and, and get ready for that. Um, my bud is I updated my big old to-do list, the big mass, you know, the, the primary list. It's got all the things on it. And that also consequently became my thorn because I realized how, how behind and how much there is to do. 
and I have this overwhelm of, of things. Um, so I'm going to break out my Eisenhower matrix. I'm going to show you an example of that in a little bit and plug those things in to pro or test. So I'm going to stop talking, let you work on your Rosebud Thorn. Be back to check in with you in just a moment. Okay, we're celebrating roses for one another. Um, some good things are happening or those buds that are are coming up. We're a little bit of conversation about, you know, the fall is like this reset, this mindset shift. Um, and it kind of gives us, you know, this new frame of reference. I love getting my new journal every single month. And I think it's because it, you know, the minute I open um, my mailbox and pull out that envelope, that pink blushy envelope, my mind goes, okay, you know, new, new beginnings. And I, I love that reminder that, you know, you're not never too old and that new beginnings can happen anytime. So I think we're all embracing that idea of the fall coming. And, um, you know, if you are dealing with thorns and you shared in the chat, or if you didn't share in the chat, just remember that you've got your silk and sonder community. And when we're gathered together, there's just, I think there's a lot of stuff going on in the universe and you're not alone. You're not alone. You even just the power of being able to say this stinks and I don't like it is um, a very part, a very big part of healing and being able to, uh, you know, not feel alone in those tougher things. So let's get into this weekly setup. Now we're going to be on pages 40 and 41 in your journal. And 
I've got lots of examples to share with you of ways you can use these spaces. You are invited to use the spaces just as they are, but we always like to have lots of examples for you to, um, you know, maybe find something that works for you in your journal. Um, I, I share often that, um, you know, a couple times a year for several weeks, I will use one of these spaces kind of as my garden tracker, because that's something that I, uh, you know, I'm a gardener in, in, in my retirement. And so there's lots of tasks and things to do. And so I designate spaces. And then when it's, you know, not peak growing season, I go back to doing a bingo board or, or whatever. So let's, let's just take a look at some examples from one another. Now, here are a couple of examples of the, this first page of the week that we're, we're going to work on. And you are invited to use stickers, to not use stickers. Y'all, I use my black Sharpie and that's pretty much it. Sometimes I'll grab, um, you know, my colored pencils, but I'm really a pen to paper kind of person. I think it, it does go back to my academic calendar starting fresh in August and doing all that planning. So I just like to see that black ink, but you can see someone's used colors. There's a couple of stickers there. Um, there's not a right way to set this up. There's not a wrong way to set this up. You take what you need. So we always start or mostly start with thinking about how we want to feel in this upcoming week. You know, think about what you know is going on in your life and hone in on a word or two, a quote, um, you know, a sticker that might speak to you. You can see some examples on the screen of how some of our um, co-family have set this up. Lots of different words like a, you know, uh, um, crossword there. Um, the, the example that's kind of there in the middle on the bottom, look, there's going to be a feeling for each day, which could be really helpful if you've got some back to school things happening and, you know, there's, there's sadness, there's happiness, there's, uh, you know, I want to feel rested. Um, maybe, you know, at work, you've got a big meeting coming up. And so that day, that one day, you're really going to lean in the confidence. So you can break that down or you can have one word to kind of talk about your whole um, your whole week. So, you know, if you've, if you've already gravitated to a word, please drop that in the chat because what you're thinking might be the word that someone else is looking for. Or if there's a feeling you want to encapsulate and you don't really know a good feeling word for that, put that in the chat. Like I'm trying to feel like I'm X, Y, Z, what would be a good word for that? And maybe our Sonder family can help come up with something to plug that in. So Aaron is going to be organized this week. Aaron, I'm kind of on board with you there. Uh, my house is a mess after <laughs> having grandkids. Sarah's feel, looking at feeling content. I love, I always love that content word contentment. Um, I'm seeing nature nurtured, going go to go camping. Yes, released. Um, always a default. If you've done a word of the year, like Stephanie is saying, go back to that word of the year, empowered. Maybe it's free. Maybe you're using, leaning into that idea of freedom. Um, and so you're going to use that prepared. Um, oh, Aaron, you haven't done it for weekly. So, okay. Erin says, I haven't done my weekly setup in two weeks. She's feeling off. You're back. Goodbye. Give yourself grace to those two weeks. Embrace this new beginning, right? That's what we love about this. Um, Christina's got all kinds of words. <laughs> Prepared, energetic, patient, blessed, consistent, less anxiety, feeling calm. So yeah, y'all are, y'all are on the right track. Thank you for sharing your words in the chat. Keep Keep them coming because again, you may inspire each other. And then we're going to take that word and we're going to look into those goals that we set for ourselves. Now, again, it says three weekly major goals. You don't have to do three. You can do one if that's what you need this week. If your goal could just be the same as that feeling word, calm, right? And then all your things to do, you know, help. How do you remain calm? Um, go take a look at the intentions that you set through that lens, maybe the lens of freedom. Go look at those intentions. Is there an intention that you could pull some goals from? Um, you know, saying goodbye to things that are not serving you. We just did this big exercise looking at our finances. Are there some, some no things that we need to incorporate in our lives? You know, no uh, mindless spending, um, no ordering out. You know, how can we get more control of our finances to feel free? 
do you have outstanding goals from last month that you want to bring forward? Um, the personal challenge, you know, a spending, a financial, a health challenge, a rest challenge. Those are kind of great ways to set up your goals, as well as maybe just popping in three categories of something that will work for you. And I've listed several that Sonder Family uh, uses to determine what their goals are. And again, calling back that word of the year, taking a look at your vision board, uh, you know, checking in with yourself with that. Think about how will your goals support the way you want to feel this week. So here's some great examples of that. Um, the one in the middle has created a little daily check-in. You know, did I get fresh air? Did I hydrate? Did I have a protein shake for lunch? Because I'm really trying to embrace the idea of feeling energized. And those are the three things that will help support that feeling that I have. Um, the one on the left, mind, body, soul, goal. you know, goals for the week. And giving some practical ways of making sure that they're leaning into that. Um, these these don't have to be, you know, these huge lofty things, things that are going to serve you well. Um, again, another another idea, you can see the check-in, the daily check-in there. Love looking at that kind of Venn diagram with the three circles over there, um, really leaning, grabbing in to being aligned to the intentions that were set, the daily habits and the mindset. You know, so when those three things are focused upon, you create these to do's or these weekly activities and habits to make sure that you are feeling aligned. Here's a way to take those goals and then put your to do's for those goals to happen over in that to do box. Um, so a couple of great examples there. Again, that look at the frog, fresh, and fun up in the upper right. So those three categories. And that frog is from the idea of eat the toad or eat the frog. Do that one thing this week that you don't want to do it. And it could be sitting down with the budget, being a grown up, doing that yucky stuff. Um and then I love kind of the idea of how this person over here on the bottom left put a quote by Aristotle around their goals for the week, that little reminder. You can also just repurpose the space. There have been weeks that I have put some kind of a graphic checklist thing here. You can see an example of my morning routine. I get out of routine very easily being, being retired. And so sometimes I just have to really lean into routines for two or three weeks and kind of reset. And I'll put my morning routines here and I put my evening routines in the shopping list. I'll have an example of that. Um, and so you might want to use this space for some kind of a check check in with yourself, or you could do quotes, a sticker, some songs you want to embrace this week, uh, maybe new recipes to try. You put a bingo here. There's not a right or wrong way to do this. And then since we're setting goals, we also want to look at our to-dos because oftentimes the to-dos will directly support the goals we have. It doesn't have to, but it can. There's a lot of different ideas on how to set your to-do space up there in the upper left. I'm going to show you a couple of those, um, but here are some examples of how folks have kind of sorted their to-dos out. They gave categories. Um, so that they can be intentional with the things that they want to happen this week. Now, this is that Eisenhower matrix I referred to earlier that I'm taking my big O to-do list, you know, the one that's everything, you know, the big projects for the house, um, little things, craft projects, all the things. And I'm going to plug them in to a matrix like this so that I can prioritize the urgent and important, which is going to be something like having the fireplace chimney checked so that we can use it this winter. That's, that's going to be pretty important. Um, all the way down to not important and not urgent. And that can be, you know, like maybe one of my hobbies doesn't have to happen. So that's a great tool. Grab a screenshot if you've not used it. A lot of folks I know will use their Eisenhower matrix for their work tasks at their place of employment. And they'll, it helps them prioritize those things that need to happen at work. I'm really good about doing the easy things, not the hard things. So the Eisenhower matrix helps me see what those hard things are and what needs to really happen. Um, you know, no, don't take the easy 
easy road out. Here's other ways to repurpose your to-do list. My to-do list is my to-do list. I, I celebrate those extra things that I do in the week that were not on the to-do list. And, and my to-do list is found in the Monday through Friday spread. I actually write it in the days there. Um, so the to-do list are the extra things that we still want to give ourselves credit for. There's a little bit of a you know, dopamine endorphin hit when I write that in and feel proud of myself for celebrating that. So um, let's go ahead and work on these two spaces and I'll be back to check in with you in just a few, minute, few minutes and check, uh, you know, check in with us. What are you, what are your goals? If you need help framing out a goal, let us know so we can support you. Um, and I'll be back to check in with you in just a few minutes. Okay, lots of very inspiring sharing with one another and support of one another. So, and yes, Sarah, I, I tend to do that. Like I would work really hard on intentions. Sarah is sharing that she forgets to go back and look at those intentions. And those were that we were in that mindset of what do we want this month to bring us? And I would always set up my page and then forget to go back and say, you know, what did I want? And, and to get what you want, you got to take take those intentions and, and put them into action through your to-dos, through your habits and activities, through um, the, the goals that you set. So yes, always go back and check on those intentions 
And speaking of habits and activities, so now you can go back and look at them and then maybe there's some activities or habits that you can incorporate this week. Remember that this space can be adjusted for the kind of week you're going to have. So we've got the habit tracker that we track every single thing we're going to do in the month, right? Like the, the daily kind of things, the big tracker. So brushing your teeth, taking your meds, getting physical movement, those things you intend to do every single day of the month. You don't have to do them every single day. It's that intention of doing them and tracking. But the this one is called habit and activity tracker, because sometimes there's things that occur just a couple of times. Maybe you go to the gym three times a week. And so you put that in as an activity and maybe circle the days. Anyhow, um, remember that you can make these little changes, these micro habits like making your bed or sitting still, still for five minutes, um, going to sleep a little early, scrolling less, these little micro habits that can then be, it's like a ripple effect. It's like throwing that little stone in the water and then it, you know, it makes makes uh, the ripple go out and far reaching. And so these small things can do the same, have the same effect in your life. So, you know, going to sit quietly for five minutes can offer you a reset that may affect how you relate to the people that you're working with. Or if you do it, you know, uh, before it's time to start a nighttime routine with little kids and you can find a way to do five minutes, it can make all the difference and ripple out and make that evening go smoother. So find small things to do that will kind of ripple out into your life, those micro habits. Here are some great examples that our, you know, um, community has shared. Lots of really neat ways to set this tracker up. If you'll notice the one that is in that upper left, they're, they're tracking the trackers to make sure that they are checking in with that mood tracker, the habit tracker, logging their sleep, doing the gratitude so their weekly habits and activities point back to those monthly habits um, and, and goals that you've set uh, through those other trackers. The one in the middle there, right below it on the left, they're doing, um, a, you know, different check-ins. So brushing teeth twice a day, well, they've drawn a line in that circle so that there's now two spaces to track. You can set goals or you can not set goals and just track. It's what works for you. Um, you'll notice that the one that is in the middle on the right, they are only going to track their Monday through Thursday. I don't know what their weekend's going to look like, but they're giving themselves permission to not worry about that tracking. And, and maybe you track during your work days. Maybe you work a traditional work week. And so Monday through Friday, is tracked. And then Saturday, you say, that's a different, those weekend days are different. And so again, take what you need. Um, you can circle days for when things need to happen. Like you see the example in the upper and bottom right hand side, they've just circled to designate those days. So um, that's just a simple way to set those up. Let's work on that. I'll be back to check in with you in a few moments and then we'll tackle the next page.
righty. So we have our habits in place and now we're going to go set up that next page as Katie likes to call it, the B side of the record album. And I'm going to show you examples for all these spaces at once and then give you time to work on them. And anything you're seeing, like you may see some examples for the meal plan, but they could be put into the um, mind body health plan, or I may show you something for shopping lists that you may want to take and put in the meal plan space. So all of this can kind of go where it serves you the best. There's some fun examples. Um, love this one on the left. You can see some of our silk and sonder stickers being used there for the self-care bingo and those five daily reminders. Those st two stickers are from the little evergreen sticker book with like the 2000 plus stickers in it. Um, and then you can see how other people, this person on the right has kind of used stickers and, and has done some different repurposing for the spaces by using some fun papers to just stick in the space. So let's take a look. You can use your meal plan for things that are food related, a tracker, a planner, um, maybe you're tracking, you know, different times of the day. Maybe you are doing something like the person on the right and doing those um, macros and looking at your, your protein and carbs and fat, just, you know, doing that. So they can be very much food related, but these are, there's a whole big list of ways that I've seen you guys repurpose. Um, so there's a clothing plan, a meal plan for my soul. I've mentioned that every week. I just love that idea. Grab a screenshot, um, a micro habit week. There you go. Okay. Just putting those little things in that can, um, you know, ripple through. And yes, I'll go back and forth between all of these while you work on this space. Again, some more ideas for repurposing. Maybe something will speak to you, you know, put your to-do list there, your affirmation. Lately, I've been putting my affirmations there. Most of the time I use it for my leftover tracker. Just depends, you know, trying try new things. Um, and then those water droplets can be used in a number of ways. You can use them for the actual liquids that you are consuming. You can color code them like you see the example over there on the right. But some folks are using them as just a check-in. So like, I feel calm checking in tw a couple times a day and, and just, you know, doing that as a little tracker, a little mini tracker. So you can use those, uh, you know, as a scale of one to eight or just a check-in. Um, when you've filled your cup up, you mark it off. So just wanted to give a little shout out to those droplets. Here's some examples for mind, body, soul. Again, any of these will work in any of the other spaces, but just some things to consider. Um, the one week of gratitude is a great little journal reflection that you could do. And again, I'll go back through these so you can grab screenshots. Uh, you can see folks are using them for affirmations. There's some five minute self care ideas like that's like a little micro habit and um i love the self-esteem journal um another prompt you know little journal prompts three positive days what what is your journey those kinds of reflections here's a wellness at work challenge if you want to maybe get some folks on board with that making your days fun by using a little bit of alliteration magic monday um, thinking Thursday, and then the shopping list again, lots of repurposing, lots of examples for how folks set it up. I had mentioned that I do, sometimes I have to redo my routines. There's my good night routine over there on the left that helped me get back in sync with the things that needed to happen at night. Um, lots of people love the bingo board here. It's just easy to draw because of those little grids. Um, and again, some more examples, some social check-ins, taking care of yourself, the intentions, Mother Nature Monday there on the bottom, Tech Free Tuesday, using those alliteration days. And then finally, your loving box. We want to stop at this very moment in time. What are you absolutely loving? And I'm going to put on some music, go through these slides, and we will close it down for the day.
we always laugh about this being the fastest hour of our week and it's it's no joking i want to just remind you you're going to be looking at that currently page after that follows this week um i want to encourage you maybe you know sometime in the in the middle of the week on page 39 you just do like a little mid month check in go look at your intentions where are you what are you loving right now? What can you put into place to make sure that August is going the way that you intended it to go? So please, you know, maybe on Wednesday, just put, do page 39 in my journal as a little micro habit to do that piece of reflection in your life. I know some folks like to do this every week, do a little check-in, um, but we want to make sure that we are utilizing that. Would love to see your setup or portions of your setup in Sonder Club. Remember that we are still offering that beta um, personal coaching um, deal through your app. I get mine every day at eight o'clock at night. I actually receive it at night and kind of use it for the next day. It helps me set our, my intentions, that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of really cool things on here. Um, so if you want more information, be sure that you check into that before that beta time expires. Here are those QR codes that will allow you to upgrade to an annual subscription, share Silk and Sonder with someone you love, um, to refer a friend. The YouTube link will be posted in the chat. Save that as a favorite. You can go back and rewatch old Silk and Sonder socials, including this one, will, which will be posted probably midday Monday, and then the survey code. And you'll also receive this, this information in a follow-up email. And then there's our song list for the day. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And um, just, you know, feel free, Sonder family. I'll see you soon.